Hello everyone. Musivya mtia. Are you okay? Muri bulunji? Yes. Okay. Um Let us read Second Kings chapter 4 first. Katsome basikaba ke choku bide sule yokuna. Old Testament, Second Kings chapter four. Ah, uh, but second book, Ezekiel, we read this today. Okuna. I read from verse one. Nenda kusoma kuva kuniyodu soka. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the cre a creditor is coming to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. Awo mukazi wo kuba kuba kazi ababa na baba nabi nayogera waguru eri eri sanga yogera anti omudduwo baze yafa era omanyinga omudduwo yatyanga mukama era owebanja aze okwetwalira abana bange bombi okuba abaddu and Elisha, Elisha said unto her what shall i do for thee tell me what hast thou in the house and she said thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save the pot of oil. Elisa na mugamba anti na kukolera chi mbulira olina chi mu nyumba na yogera anti omuzana wo talina chintu omu nyumba wabula akasumbi ka mafuta. And then he said go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors even empty vessels borrow not a few. Awo na yogera anti genda Weyazike ebintu ebweru mo mobanno bonna ebintu ebyerere weyazike binjiko and when thou art come in and thou shall shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons and shall pour out into all those vessels and thou shall set aside that which is full awo no yingira we galire gwe ne batabanibo oturudire mu bintu ebyo byonna oleke ebijude so she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, and who brought the vessels to her and she poured out. And it, uh, and it came to pass when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a, son, yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more, and the oil stayed. Awo lwatuka ebintu webyajjula na gamba mutabani wenti ndetera nate ekintu na mugamba anti tewali kintu nate and she came and told the man of god and he said go sell the oil and pay the debt and leave thou and thy children of the rest amafuta ne gakoma awo najja nabulira omusajja wa katonda nayo guarantee genda otunde amafuta osasule abe banja lyo uh, ne binafikawo uh, bikulise Gwe ne batabanibo. There's a uh, okay. There's a good man, um, one good person in America. You know, sometimes when you have a church, sometimes you you need more space for the parkings. When there are a lot of cars. And then there was a church, and the church grew bigger and bigger. And then every Sunday, uh, they needed more space for parking. And then there was a, um, the, the entrepreneur, the, the owner of the building, the next door. You know, usually business run during the weekdays, not a weekend. So this, the owner of the building, a very good man, he let the church use the parking lot on Sundays. He's a good man, right? You know how many weeks are in one year? 52, right? So this good man let the church use the parking lot for 
Uh, ono msaje ya kiriza, parking yeba jikoze se, okumale na kwa uh, wiki atano muemu. So the, 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 the church people can use the parking lot every week except for one week. So for the one week that they cannot use the parking lot, parking became the chaotic. It was so hard to park. And they always in the wonder, how come the man does not let us use the parking lot for just for that one week. And they just thought that there must be a reason. So one church person went to the owner of the building and asked, How come you let us use the, uh, the parking lot, you know, Every week except for the one week? Can you guess what the answer was? And it was to let who owns the building. Let them know who owns the building. It, if, if, they, if he let them use Every week for 52 weeks. Then the church people think that the parking lot is ours. But for the one week that they cannot use, they, they realize the parking lot is his. You know, sometimes we have difficulties. You know, we wish that we don't have any difficulties. You know, we wish that whatever we do, everything becomes so well. You know, whenever we encounter difficulties, we have to realize who owns me? Who's the owner of me? Who owns you? Do you own yourself? No. Sometimes we think that, you know, my life is mine. But it's not true. And God owns me. And we have to listen to him, right? You know, today I read uh, 2 Kings chapter 4. And you know this story, right? There's a woman and who um, women of the wives of the sons of prophets. So it's like the uh, there's a missionary students. And it's talking about his wife. And then the husband died. So she went her way. You know, it doesn't say whatever what she did or what kind of business, what kind of work she did. But you know, she, she must owe a lot of money. I don't know how much she owned. But now the creditor is coming to take her two sons. And then, at that time, she came to the prophet Elisha. And then she explained to him, you know, what, what's happening. Tomorrow, the creditors will come and take my two sons. So what do I do? And the Elisha asked her, what do you have in your house? And she replied, I have nothing but a pot of oil. And then he said, and then, Go to your neighbors, every house, visit every house, and borrow empty vessels. And then she sent her two sons to borrow vessels. And then she started pouring the oil according to what the prophet said. And then somehow the oil did not stop. 
Amafuta gano tegale kirao kufamu. The oil filled all the vessels. Gaso volo kuberanga gajusa ebibabiyo na. And then she came, came to, na. she came to Elisha. Nadja eri Elisha. So what do I do now? Nkolechi. And of course sell the oil and pay the debt and leave yourself. Na mugamba genda otunda mafuta gano obere nebisigala obibere bibiyo. This is the story we know. Duna ure rugero ure tumanyo bulonji. Are we on the same page? Fenatuli wamu? Yes. I want to talk about this part of oil today. When Elisha asked her, Elisa yamubuza, What do you have in your house? Chicho ina and what did she say? Yamudamuchi. It says, uh, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a part of oil. It's a very difficult old English. To make it simple, she said, I have nothing but a part of oil. I don't have anything but just a part of oil. So what do you mean by that? When you say, I, have, I, I don't have anything but a part of oil, that means, you know, this part of oil is nothing. Is that right? But now we think we have to think about this. This part of oil actually solved all her problems. Actually, that part of oil resolved all the problems she had. And she came to him because she had a great, great problem. But this part of oil solved the problem. But in a heart, that part of oil was nothing. You know, you know, in the Bible, the oil represents the Holy Spirit. And it represents God. It represents the God, also represents the Word of God. And the Word of God is a testimony, it's a promise. You know, many times, you know, we have the word of God, we have the promise, but we consider it like nothing. That's why we have problems. You know, she had a pot of oil, she had a great problem, then does she have a problem? Let's say you have a debt for um, let's say one billion. What's the Kenya, uh, the Uganda money? Uganda. Let's say you have one million shilling of the debt. Ah, to go and pay into ina aka billion. One million. Or ina aka aka kade kamu ngali banja lio ina. But if if you have the savings of two million shillings, na te singo bali na ko sente zo watere kanga zuwe robo kade bobiri. Your debt is nothing. You have a pot of oil. You have so much debt. That means you don't have any problem. But in our heart, that pot of oil was, was considered nothing. To you, Aren't the word of God consider almost nothing? That's when you have say, you say you have problems. You know, when I was reading this scripture, I was very, very thankful for one reason. In the debtors and the problems took away everything she had except the part of oil. You know, Satan can come and take everything from you. But there's the one thing Satan cannot take from you. There will be salvation. There will be Holy Spirit. There will be Word of God. There will be the pro promise you receive from God. You know, if you have that one promise, then 
that is able to solve all your problems and it's more than enough. And that's what the second Kings chapter 4 is talking about. But you have you have that promise, you have the word of God. But it seems it's nothing until when a great problem appears to you. You know, we are so evil, we are so away from God. You know, we are just like this woman. Unless we have a great, great, great problem, we don't come to the servant of God. We don't, we don't come to God. We don't come to him to look for what, what we have in our heart. Because we don't care about God. And we think that I own my Myself. And, and I'm a master of my own way of living and my spiritual life. I'm the one who makes a decision. I'm the one who considers which is good, which is bad. I'm the one who considers, you know, I'm in a I'm in a good condition or bad condition. You know. I was coming to Uganda. And then I would think about and what what kind of plan does God has for Uganda? You know what what things of what God thinks of the Good News Mission Church in Uganda. Katonda Yogerachi Good News Mission Uganda. And I think it is it's like a pot of oil. Nendo woza nga kalinga kasumbi kama futa. Maybe to you, oba joli is not as big. Anga si chinene. But to God, na yeri katonda, it's more than enough to solve every problems, and it's more than enough. Ah, chima lira dalo kubera nga chima lowe bizubu biyo na biyo nambula. You know, you know we have a different eyes from God. Ah, tulina amaso ganja ulonaga katonda. You know we we see it. Oh, there's a problem, there's an issue, there's a difficulties. But what does God think of this church? And God thinks of this church as one church that will save everyone in Uganda. Do you know the population of Kampala? It's a little over 1.7 million. Uh, million emu, ne, no, tundu, tundu, How come you don't even know the population of Kampala? Ne, vanna, Kampala bali, you know, God set this church so that he can preach to 1.7 million people uh, in Kampala. Is that right? You know, if you start running to preach gospel to 1.7 million people, will God be happy? Oh, God will say, you are crazy. You are too small to preach to 1.7 million. Don't even think about preaching to everyone. Just preach to your neighbor. Will God say that? No. If, you, if you're running to preach the gospel to 1.7 population of Kampala. God will be so excited. Now I meet a person that that have the same heart with me. You know, God set this church in Kampala to preach to everyone in Kampala. That's what God wants to do, right? You know, never consider yourself small or nothing. You know, she considered part of oil almost nothing. That was 
her evil heart. You consider this church small, then you are very evil in front of God. You know, God has promised for this church. And you know, God has promised for each one of us. If you consider yourself like she did to the pot of oil, then that is great evil, great Greatly evil to God. Because God said this part of oil is more than enough to save 1.7 million people. Amen. Yeah, that's so true. But she considered it nothing. You know, you have something that Satan cannot take from you. Satan may have took away from you faith and this and that, your zeal, your heart, your passion. Maybe now you're in trial, you're in difficulties, you're in problems. But there's one thing that Satan cannot take from you. That's God's promise. That's God's plan. That's Holy Spirit. And that's salvation. And that's word of God. And that is more than enough to, for us to go out and preach to 1.7 People in Kampala. Even yesterday, she was in trial. Even yesterday, she had no faith. And the Bible says, Scripture says, that's not a problem. Today, you acknowledge that you have a part of oil. And that is more than enough for us to go out and work for the God. Never consider yourself lacking. Because you have this part of oil. Never consider yourself like nothing. Because you have this part of oil. If you receive salvation, and if you believe that you have no sin, and you believe that you are holy, then you have this promise. And that that part of oil is more than enough. Sometimes I look at myself. Oh, am I able to do this? The Bible says you're more than enough. Because you have part of oil. Sometimes I look at myself. But now we have to look at a part of oil. Raise your hands if you have a part of oil. We can save maybe 10 million people. You know, you know, never consider this part of oil small or nothing. You have to realize, remember, and you have to speak out. And you have to say to yourself, you have to say to others, I have this part of oil. God said, this is more than enough. Satan will always tell you, you have nothing. You have no faith. You have no skill to preach the gospel. You don't know how to preach the gospel. You don't know how to do God's work. She thought to herself like that. She said, I have nothing. I have nothing in my house but a pot of oil. But when, when Elisha heard that, he's like, this is good enough. This is more than enough. When Elisha heard it, he had no problem. Okay, go and borrow vessels. And this oil will solve all your problems. And then her and her Children went out and borrowed vessels. And they brought the vessel. And she started pouring the oil. And it started to fill the vessels. One vessel after another. You know, sometimes um, 
I'm from Seoul. Was soll? Um, when I was coming here. When I was coming here. You know how we start from Incheon to Addis, Addis and Addis to Entebbe. Ah, but what for the Incheon? Let's go and Addis Ababa and then Entebbe. And then tomorrow I'm going to uh, Dar es Salaam. Incheon and Dar es Salaam. And then to Kigali. And then to Kigali. And then to Buzumbra. And then to Buzumbra. And then back to Korea. And then to Korea. So one one country in one day. Ah, but in sing in Jirina Moru na Kulumu. And I, I, I was thinking, you know, what, what do we share with brothers, sisters? What do we share with the missionaries? Ah, You know, we can talk about a lot of problems. Uganda Church may have some problems. But problem is not actually a problem. Actually. Not considering a pot of oil great, that na, is a problem. Na yo mama gano Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes we look at a problem so much. And then we wish that problem is solved. I was, I'm talk, I was talking to um, the Pastor James. And then in his heart, the not not having a land to build a church is the problem. But I know that's not a problem. Because we have a pot of oil. It's a now or later, right? It, 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 may, be, it may not be now. It will be later. That's not a problem. But Every single one of you consider this part of oil that God gave you is more than enough for us to go out and preach the gospel. It's more than enough to accomplish God's work. And while we are running the race, land will come to us. You know, let's say in this place, you know, the, the 300 people, 500 people, 1,000 people gather. And the God says, this place is too small. Then God will be eager to give us the land. Because he wants to save more people in Uganda than us. If you, let's say, oh, we, we want to preach the gospel, I want this person to receive salvation. And you have to multiply that by maybe 10,000 times. And that, that may be the God's heart. The God wants to save the people in Uganda more than we do. So if we run, go out and preach the gospel and work, for, work to in the preach gospel to people here, the land will come to us. If the God doesn't give us the land, that's not a problem. You know, God wants us to preach gospel here, then we do. You know, that is not a problem. You know, each one of us, for, the, for, the, for this part of world that God give us, you know, sometimes it's not revealed. You know, we have it, but we don't see it. You know, until this problem comes. So sometimes God gives us a problem. And then so that we can find this part of oil. Um, I was I was thinking about too many things. So I kinda got confused what to say. Uh, you know, um, in Seoul we had a the Grand Bible Seminar. And we always 
I had a Bible seminar in the gymnasium. But this fall, uh, we couldn't uh, rent uh, a gymnasium. We tried. We tried hard. But we couldn't get one. So you know, we did it at a church. In the Gangnam Church. You know, sometimes I see it, or uh, I consider it, uh, maybe it's too small. To sometimes you know, uh, we wanna, we want to have this. Uh, you know, we want to do it in a bigger place. Sometimes God doesn't let us. Sometimes God doesn't let us the way that we want. Sometimes God reveals that. And I don't have faith. Sometimes God reveals that. I'm not I'm a I'm a very weak person. And he reveals that I'm small. Or I'm not able. And however, that should not be a problem. And us being small is not a problem. You know, I liked the story of four lepers. You know, there was a, a people in the city of Samaria. And there were lepers outside of the city. You know how the leprosy is like a curse disease. So if you're found to have leprosy, you cannot stay in the city. So they find shelter outside of the city. You know, when the Syrians, um, the soldiers surrounded the city of Samaria, and they, they surrounded the city for a long time, so that the city of Samaria started to starve. They could not go and harvest. They cannot get the fruit from the trees. And they start to starve. You know, they, um, they eat from the dove dung. And at that time, there were four lepers outside of the city. These four was talking to themselves. You know, we are going to die here. You know, we, because we have no food. And there is no food in the city. No one can give us the food. And let's go to the Syrians. Are you crazy? They're going to kill you. But if we stay here, we're going to die anyway. But if we go to the Syrians, if they, if they kill us, we die. But maybe they, they, they will just let us go. That we can live. So the four lepers started their journey to the Syrians. When these four lepers going to the Syrians, God worked. And then God changed the sound Katonda of the big army. The Syrians became scared. And they all ran away. You know, let's say there are the people who serve God in the city of Samaria. And there must be people who serve God well Era in the city of Samaria. And will God be happy for those people who stayed in Samaria and serve God well? Or will God be happy for those for, uh, for, for those four lepers? For the four lepers, right? Do you understand? Let's say there are people who serve really God well in the city of Samaria. You know, they, um, they pray to God every day. They go and have service every day. You know, they read the Bible every day. And then, um, but they stay in the city of Samaria. There are four lepers. And they are cursed. But they are now 
heading to the Syrians. And whom will God be happy for? For those who stay in Samaria and serve God well? Or for those, for those that are going to the city of Samaria? Syrians. Syrians. God will be happy for the four lepers, right? You know, it's a, it shows that God does not see what kind of person I am. You know, never, never look at yourself. And that's what God hates the most. And you may be a good Christian. Or you may not be a good Christian. But that's not a consideration. What do we have to consider? Let's say I'm in trial. But God said, um, go and preach the gospel. Then you can go preach the gospel. Let's say you are, you are in difficulties. And God said, you go out and preach. Then you, you go out and preach. And that's what God is looking for, right? You know, I'm a pastor myself. You know, I have this eager to become a good pastor. You know, a um, good preacher. I preach like a million people. Watch my YouTube. I, I put my sermon on the YouTube. And only a few people watch it. So I stop my YouTube. <laughs> Because it seems like people don't like it. <laughs> but it, you know, I want to become like a, a million view. Uh, mil, I want to have like a million subscribers. Right? I'm, I'm just saying it. But you know, I have this eager to become a good pastor. Like tall and handsome. And having good voice. And having a lot of humor. Whenever I preach, people laugh and smile. And also a charisma that everybody will say, Hallelujah, Amen. All the time. But whenever I preach, people are mbulira, so quiet. Babera, they just say amen basili, like this. Bagamba, amina, Close bagera. their eyes and say, you know, nod their heads to ba say amen. Maso gawe, ne basulike, mitwenga, bagamba, amina. You know, um, becoming a good pastor. Mulunji, why do I, and I said to my, I was thinking, why do I want to become a good pastor? You know, why do I have to become a good pastor? You know, is it important to become a good pastor? What's more important? You know, for um, God being present in the church is more than, uh, more important than becoming a good pastor. Seeing God working in the church. And that is more important. And I started to think. What will please God? You, you, you know, you have to think. What will please God? So you do what God pleases. You oh. do what God is happy for. Oh. That's what we do. You know, we don't do what we think is right. No, we do what God is pleased of. You know, that's who we are. When the four lepers went to Syrians, God was satisfied. God was happy. And God worked. And those four lepers were more than enough 
to defeat Assyrians. And with our ca- calculation, four lepers are not enough to kill the old Assyrians. And the Assyrians were enough to surround the entire city. And there were so many. They were so, they were so strong. You know, you know, for lepers and the Syrians, it cannot even be a game. But when God worked, four lepers were able to defeat the Syrians. You know, if you walk the path, if you walk the path that God is pleased of, you can defeat everything. And that is the secret of spiritual life. Right? So I started to think instead of, the, instead of becoming a good pastor, you know, I would think what God is pleased of. At first, I didn't know what God was pleased of. So I started listening to. What Pastor was saying. I started listening to what Pastor was interested in. And let us, let me start with that. If it was a CLF, and I do it with all my heart. If it was a camp, and I step forward with all my heart. You know, by doing so, we start to learn what God is pleased with. And if you if you walk in that path, but you're not yourself anymore. Because God is with you. If you're alone, and when God is with you, it's a totally two different beings. When God works with you, you're not a just an ordinary person. When a pastor was saying that you know, he sent um, uh, a lot of missionaries, you know, there are about 235 pastors in but, Korea. But Good News Mission sent over 270 missionaries. Good News Mission 270, more than uh, So we have more missionaries abroad than in Korea. Average age of the pastors in Korea is over 60 years. So average age of the pastors in Korea is between 60 and 65. But average age of the missionaries of Good News Mission it's in the mid-30s. So all the young and good pastors are abroad. In Korea, we have all the old pastors. If you go to retreat, you have two rooms. Two rooms for pastors. The one room says over 65. The other room says under 65. That's how we divide. Sometimes the one room says the pastors with the grandchildren. <laughs> The other room says pastors without grandchildren. But in abroad, like Africa, Europe, America, you know, other than the Korea, Africa, we have so many 
young and good pastors. And whenever I come abroad, I'll be very, very excited. Because like a Pastor James, a Pastor James, Johan, Johan, you cannot even find such pastor in Korea. You know, pastors in the like late 20s and early 40s, there were only like three or four pastors like that in Korea. And I'm one of them. But in, in overseas, almost everyone's like in those ages. So, I come to Uganda, and I see you, and I have to say, you're so blessed. And you have such a good pastor. You know, I guess he can work here for at least like next 30, 40 years. But in Korea, because every pastor is like in their 60s and 70s, now some pastors are in their 80s. I don't know how long they can work. Maybe maximum 10 years. So, you know, we start to plan Ten years later, years later, and we were like the the couple of hours before we were planning about the the Kenya in ten years from now. You know, this year we had a thirtieth year anniversary. The service, right? Yeah, in Kenya. Kenya, So we were planning about. What about the 40th year? What's it going to be? And where it's going to be? And how many people are we going to have in, in after 10 years from now? You, know, you should start thinking about 10 years from now in Uganda. What do, we for, what do we do for the next 10 years? Are we just going to sit here and spend one year? And the next year is going to be the same. Two years from now is going to be the same. No. You know, God, it, God wants you to um, grow and work. You know, God wants you to go out by faith. And live by faith. You know, I give a very difficult task to Pastor James. Whenever I see him, so he doesn't like me so much. Because whenever I see him, I give him a, such a hard task. I know it's very hard. But that difficulty will let you find a pot of oil. If you have that difficulty, then you will find a pot of oil. Pastor Park gave me every single time the most difficult task. Sometimes that made me difficult for month and month. Sometimes I cried a lot for that task. That I'm not able to do this. But later on I look back. That made me grow in faith. That made me see what God wants to do. You know, never turn yourself down in front of the difficulties that God gave, gives you. You know, remember that you have a pot of oil. You know, Satan can take everything but this part of oil. You could, be a, you could be in a great, great, great problem. But Satan cannot take it from you. That part of oil. 
Whenever difficulty comes to you, whenever it says, I'm not able to do this, can we do this? Our church can take this? And remember that you have a pot of oil. And this pot of oil is able to solve all the problems. And believe that you have a pot of oil. And to remember this pot of oil. Oil, and that is able to solve problems and it's more than enough. Amen. Amen. You know, God wants us to remember it. God wants us to see that we have it. God wants to use it. How long are you going to just save the part of oil to yourself? You know, the, the part of oil she had was more than enough, more than anything she had experienced um, um, after her husband died and until this time. But she never used it. But now she's using it. Now she realizes that she never used it. And this is greater than anything she had experienced. You know, God wants to experience it. God wants you to use it. God wants you to find it. And God wants you to testify it. Oh, I didn't know that I had this part of oil. You know, this great difficulty came to me. God gave me this test. I depended on the part of Oil. Now I see I had this part of oil and then I despised it until now. You look at other brothers and sisters. Tell them, don't despise that part of oil. <laughs> Because you have this part of oil. You know, this part of oil is so great. You know, sometimes I, I face myself difficulties too. I remember the second kings chapter 4. I remember second kings chapter 4. Yes, I do have this part of oil. Then it's not a problem. Um, the four lepers, although they seemed to be cursed. There may be time that it seems to be cursed. There will be time that it seems that I am cursed. But I'll tell you that's not a problem. The problem is you, know, you stay where you are. You know, even if you, it seems like you're doing a good spiritual life. If you stay where you are, then that's not God. That doesn't make God happy. You may seem like a, like a cursed person, but today, if you walk forward, like the four lepers. Take your step towards what God is happy with. You know, take your step forward to where God tells you. That's what God makes. That's what God. That's what makes God happy. You know, never look at yourself. You know, consider. Uh, where you are heading. You know, put, put the gospel to yourself. You know, never consider yourself and take the gospel um, to the next level. How do we preach the gospel? God, please, you know, uh, let me preach the gospel today. Uh, there were um, there were ones that the pastor was having fellowship with the short-term missionaries. He asked a question. Do you preach the gospel? There are sometimes. Did you preach the gospel last past past one month? 
No. Neda. How come? Chidja chitia. Oh. It's too hard to preach the gospel. They don't listen to me. Pastor asked another question. Have you prayed to God so that you can preach the gospel? Nobody answered. Do you pray that you can preach the gospel today? To Every day you wake up. Now you can start praying to God. God, please let me preach the gospel today. God, please send me a person so I can preach the gospel. Or give me a heart to preach the gospel. And let me preach the gospel today. You wake up every day and then you ask God. You know, sometimes we just give up. Sometimes we don't do anything. We don't even come to God. You know, this woman came to Elisha. She sought the man of God. You know, your spiritual life begins there. You wake up in the morning. Pray to God. Let me preach the gospel today. You know, that is um, 2 Kings chapter 4. Verse 1. If you don't do that, verse 1 does not begin. Do you think that if you come to God, verse 1 begins. Do you think that if you come to God, and he will, he will come and ask you a question, what do you have in your house? Then you will answer, I have nothing but a pot of oil. And while doing so, you will find the part of oil great. And then you will you know, solve all your problems by God's grace. And let us look for God. You know, don't just spend one day without looking for God. And I'm coming to Uganda. And I know I'll be speaking to you. And I'll seek God. God, what do you have in your heart for Ugandans? What do you have your what do you what do you have in, in your mind for brothers and sisters in Uganda? Isn't that's the beginning of first one? So tomorrow. Your another Second Kings chapter four verse one begins. You pray to God. God, let me preach the gospel. God, I pray to God. You will uh, make the church abundant. And you will make the You will make the church abundant. And you will make the church abundant. And you will give us grace. And that's how we begin the verse one. And then you will come to verse two and three and and then you will testify that God is with us and that God is able. Um, and we are praying even from Korea that the Uganda church will receive a lot of grace from God. And whenever I think of Uganda, you know, God has great his great heart towards Uganda. I know Mutimakwe Guamani Neri Uganda. Because I came to Uganda many times following Pesa Park. Kubanga and Najam Uganda Mirundi Minjing and Goberam Sumba Park. And I can remember more than many other countries. Eran Subira Nenzi Zemu Uganda Oksing and Sendala. There are even countries that Pesa Park didn't even visit. Walwon and C and Dala Musumba Park as Ata Chadi Ranga. And then also God led uh, Reverend Park meet with the president. And I can tell that the God has his great plan in here in Uganda. And God wants to accomplish that plan through each one of you. That's why God saved you. If you say, oh, I'm a leper, I'm not able to do it. And I told you, that is evil in front of God. You know, 
Never say that you are not able. But remember that you have part of oil. Do you understand? And never say that you are you are not able. But just remember that you have a part of oil. And then the God will work through you. And let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father God, we are very, very grateful today. Whenever we think of Uganda, God really wants to work greatly here in this place. And let our brothers and sisters live by faith. And let us uh, walk the path that God is happy with. And when our brothers and sisters preach the gospel, may the Holy Spirit work greatly through them that people will receive salvation, and praise the Lord. Thank you for this uh, fellowship. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you.